something a bit more serious. Rights of way is the topic. Um, Hans um, asked me once uh, whether that could be an interesting legal issue, uh, ways out of uh, rights of way. Do, do we have ways on foreign, on, on, on other properties? So why is it interesting? Uh, I, I, I was lucky to, to take up this subject because I thought that could be an interesting issue which leads to ways out of the state, which is my, my big interest. Um, as you recall, I'm still working on a class action. It's still not done. It's still pre being prepared, um, where many victims of our Swiss federal government, our state, come together for a class action defending this, that strange organization called Schweizerische Eidgenossenschaft, Swiss Confederation, actually the federal state. And now the um, legal remedies requested, um, there is for today just the first one of interest. So the main request is not that this organization shall be dissolved or something like that, but that the plaintiffs have the right to withdraw out of this organization. Uh, to, to say it a bit, a bit uh, disrespectfully, to leave the club without being obliged to leave the country. So uh, to think that it's an organization, that state is not the country or the people of the country, it's an organization like some firm um, and um, it's to challenge the mandatory membership. This is the idea of this um, class action. And now, by preparing things of such a concept, um, suddenly comes um, the um, objection. But did you think about a very practical question? And this is the following. As you know, I like structures like that. So, uh, again, we, we have this situation. We have the state with the members. Do I have a, a pointer? No, no. With the members, you see these, these uh, people there that are the members. This is shown with these lines there. And why are that conglomerate? Many things are organized. For instance, you see this here, uh, down, um, these common issues, mainly the land, infrastructure of streets and so on, belongs to the state, beside many other things. You, you see that over there. And now you see if I'm here, the blue one, if I want to go to my neighbor or to friends, I have to cross this common land, the common streets, to get there. Others too have to do that. And then, of course, once we um, declare our withdrawal out of this club, maybe the club government says, okay, we are open for new ideas, we let you go. But consider this, once you cut your membership, I say property. I enjoy saying property this time because you always talk about property rights, you know. This morning, for instance, we heard about a lot about the importance of property right. That That's a sort of absolute position. So the, this time it's the state who says, I am the owner, I have property. This time it goes against you. Don't trespass my property. You're still welcome to come back to our club, but once you do not want to be there, you're out. So you're sort of in your own prison. Your house is now your prison. You won't get out because after the house, after your garden comes my property and you do not have the right to go over this. And therefore, it's interesting to ask, do we have rights of way through such a, a situation? Now let us put, 
let's put it a bit more abstract, simplified to to go through these um, aspects. We have this situation here again: the state there with his property monopoly, so to speak, on his state land. We have uh, this one here who wants to get out and who wants to have a right of way. And we have the state who says no, no trespassing, property. And now this one says, but there are old principles of law that I have a right to cross your land. Old principles of law, this sounds very solemn and um, important, but where are these old principles? So show, show them to me. And this is what I wanted to try. Let's really go very back to those roots where these, these legal principles are coming from. It is to old rural Roman law, about 2,500 years ago. We have this basic structure of familia, of part of familias, who is the, I do not say the owner, because at that stage, property is not uh, the issue. He, who, is, who is the one at the top of this group? There are family and famulae, it is servants. Um, therefore, this entity is called familia. This is not family in, in, a, in, a, in a narrow sense of parents and children. This is a broader group with maybe many parts of a bigger family. Pecunia, this is interesting, the word pecunia, which means the cows, cattle. Uh, and because these are value aspects, it's no accident that pecuniary, you know, this, this word we know has an um, economic aspect still. And then we have these, these people, we have the cows, these are the horns I try to, to uh, sketch there. You see one cow just trying to, to run away though. So this is familia and part of familias. This is not very important for the question of property or so. It becomes only important once another such club, another such family comes in. Of course, there are many such families. The next farm maybe is not right beside, like in an urban situation, but it's there. And now, still no question of property, but now this cow there, <laughs> do you see that cow? Um, now comes what should come. This cow goes faster, uh, farer. And now you see these patres, familias, who are somehow worried. What about this cow? Whose cow is it? They come together. And now what happens now? What, what must come, of course. Um, now comes up the question who is, let's say, competent for this beast. Um, something like a distinction between a subject and the object in the legal sense, perhaps, in a competence sense. And now what happens, what happens is manu kipere, Latin, manu with the hand, kipere, to take, to take with the hand. What do they do, these two? This one, he takes maybe one horn, you know, and he says, meum esse ayo. Ayo, I say, meum esse, this is mine. This is a formula. Actually, this comes out of the situation. That's mine. I take it. Um, uh, but this is then uh, refound uh, in a long tradition in legal formulas. And of course, what, what, ma what makes the other one? because he speaks Latin too, he says meum esse ayo, and he takes the other horn, perhaps. Um, this is the situation which reminds me to what we heard this morning from Stefan Kinsella, 
who is the owner of a contested resource? Now, now comes up the question of who is the owner. Before, we did not have this question at stake. How to solve this problem? Now, let's assume that some neighbor who hears this shouting comes by and tries to um, moderate this discussion. Maybe they, found, they find a, a solution. Maybe he asks around and uh, I think this is really your cow the, on the blue side. And he gives this blue man Monkipium. This comes out of Manu Kipre. Now he is the entitled Manu Kipiens. This is Manu Kipium. This is the earliest word of what for us is property. Property is not proprietas, it's not yet the notion at that time. It's Man Kipium. So he has Man Kipium to this cow, that on the left side there. So one can say Mancipium, proprietas in a way, is a result out of mutual contestation. It's the litigation, the conflict um, that creates these rights. And this is the way while the Roman law, I marked it here, calls <coughs> these important assets Res monkey pee. Not all assets, not all values are res monkey pee, are important values that must be transferred in very special rituals. Only slaves, cattle, and land. And by the way, which is an interesting uh, remark, uh, by the way, this this ritual of solving a conflict is later on developed as the formality to transfer important things, to transfer res monkey pee. So if you want not to, to catch the cow that has run away, but if you want to transfer a, a, a cow, you have the institution of monkey patio. And then you sort of reconstruct that situation of a, of a contestation, of a difference you had. It is some third person must be present. Um, usually he has a libra, libra, a, a, a scale so, to, to, to weight, uh, um, and a as is playing a role, as which is copper. And this goes back, one, one thinks, to um, early rituals when it's about to exchange something. Maybe it's not clear whose cow is it, then, then this mitigator says, okay, you take the cow, but you pay him something. And, and therefore, this monkey patio is sort of of formality to transfer land or slaves or cows. And one can say that out of this, from the settlement of mutual contestation, comes a form of mutual attribution. So it's, it's not some abstract principles that come from somewhere, this is why what I want to show, that are applied on something, but it's something, these are structures coming out of the conflict, bottom up, so to speak, and not top down. Now, we are still at that time, and this time it's not a cow, but a slave, that also happens, um, where it's unclear, and of course, this is just to, to repeat, you know, meum esse ayo, the other one too, Manu Kipre, the third one that comes in and he says, okay, this is your slave, you have mancipium um, on this slave. But we want to hear something about our rights of way, so, what has this to do with our rights of way? Now, let's say 
let's take an example where not the slave as such or the cow as such is contested, but something else. It is that there is, of course, a cow and a slave walking over there, but the problem is not, not these two things, things, yeah, but that they walk this way. And now what is interesting, in these very earlier times already, you find some conflict that arises because he probably walks on somebody else's land. This other one comes and says, Meum esse ayo? The other one says, no, no, Meum, of course not your land. I do not contest your land, but my is the right to go with my slaves and cows that way to some pasture, pasture land elsewhere or whatever to a neighbor I want to, um, I have a right to do it. It's my right to do it. And these very same formulas are found in these old um, cases also not only for things, but also for the right to transfer, to pass on um, a, a place. Here too, they call it Manu Kippe. Maybe it's not Manu, but with the feet, but uh, he is on there, the other tries to stop him. Um, and the question comes up, who has the right to it? And then we have again this third, Libri pens who comes in, and now what does he, what uh, what his is his conclusion? He says, um, mancipium of the land is still on the right side over there, but he says, depending on the situation, what this way is concerned, there are notions in Latin eater or actus, actus is more with with cattle and so on. It is just to walk via, uh, via or aqueductus to 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 uh, let flow water on some some place. For that, this third moderator says he has mancipium. He has not just just some some weak right. He has mancipium for this. Um, way, or le le let's leave open if just to use its way. Um, sometimes it's it's called really the way as such, this stripe of two or three meters, whatever, or sometimes it's called as just the right to use that stripe. But monkeypium of this iter. So here too, one can say, out of this settlement of mutual contestation, we have a mutual attribution of mancipium. Mutual in as far as the land there, the way here. And then, actually, the same can be followed during the development of the Roman law. A bit later in the classical Roman law, this is the first time that it's called proprietas. This notion here of, of an old institution comes in somehow later. Sometimes they call it dominium. You see here the left side. The other one, the neighbor, whoever this neighbor is, also has mancipium, dominium, proprietas for his land, and then against onus, which is sort of payment, compensation, this one of the left side has, together with his, his right on the land, he has also a right on the way through the neighbor's land, and they call it mancipium proprietas, proprietas, so ownership. And the other one has sort of reduced ownership because he has to um, let, let it free for his neighbor. Then uh, again later, this is also an example how a certain scientific abstraction takes place, how these old rural situations are then transferred into a rather abstract theoretical system, but 
on the basis, it's still these old conflicts and their solution. So they call the same thing now differently. Um, for instance, uh, I, I'm talking about the real classical Roman law. This is, this is about 300, 400 uh, after Christ. Use uh, commune, which is um, in the Middle Ages when this was re-rediscovered, so to speak, and and even later in the Enlightenment times where these these scientific structures were developed further, then they called it dominium directum. They made different notions here: dominium directum, which is on the land as such, and what these other Dominium or proprietas is concerned, they called it dominium utile, dominium to use, or servitus. Servitus that 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 serves, you know, it's it's the same the same word. Um, and on the other side, you have the one who is charged with this servitus. Um, he still has proprietas, which actually could give him the right to prevent the other one, but it's charged with the neighbor's service. So this means that he can forbid him to, to um, walk on his land in general, but he must allow him to go at a place suitable for that um, to, to cross this, this land. This is the situation a bit later. Then uh, let's follow it uh, in the civil code tradition that in the two days, actual civil law traditions, of course, now we call it definitely property as a general right we have. Um, servitude, servitus, um, be it by law, by contract, um, as a limited right. And namely, in case it's necessary for this neighbor on the left side to go there, he has a right by law, not only by contract, even if, if there is no contract, um, he has the right to cross that place against compensation. I do not read down all this, but just a, an interesting example, you find that in all codifications in the, the, the Swiss Civil Code, in the German Code, everywhere. And this is an example which is interesting because it's a Civil Code example of America. Uh, as you probably know, Louisiana Code is, is one, one exception within the common law tradition of the states um, where there is a, a French uh, Civil Code tradition. And so this is an example you find in other Civil Codes of, of Europe as well. And, and this is then an example in Section 3 of that code, Article 609, you have, for instance, now this sentence, the owner of an estate that has no access to a public road or utility may claim a right of passage over neighboring property to the nearest, and so on, and he is bound to compensate his neighbor. If there are new or additional maintenance burdens, this shall be the responsibility of the owner of the dominant estate, so the one who has this right of passage. And in the next paragraph, you see here that this right of passage shall be suitable for the kind of traffic or utility that is reasonably necessary. So the one who has the right, he cannot exaggerate, but what is reasonably suitable for him, that um, he should be entitled to. And many others, uh, I have five minutes, so I must abbreviate a bit, um, other um, aspects um, that are uh, mentioned in, these, uh, in, uh, in this code here. Now, the same is true in the common law tradition, which is also influenced by the Roman law, of course, but maybe less directly than the civil code tradition. Uh, here you have actually the same um, schemes with slightly different uh, terms, but of course you have property. Um, 
sometimes these rites, rite of way, rites of passage, are called as a minimal easement. It's it's like it's the servitus we had, the servitude, but but very very um, reluctant in a reluctant way and not too intrusive, um, which then is called a minimal easement in the land in case of emergency, in case of need. So actually it's the same scheme against compensation. So one could say, um, if we look back now at this development, what is the rationale of all this? The rationale which had as consequence that these schemes emerged out of uh, these conflicts, the rationale has to do that here on the left side we have some need, emergency may mean uh, even, in case of need, not just by uh, if you want to, but if you really have to, if you need to, that then you have a right of passage if the next one, the neighbor one, has sort of a monopoly. He has the possibility in principle to prevent you to go there. Then if you do not have other uh, possibilities, he has just a monopoly for you to come to some other place. In that situa situation, you have the need, he has the monopoly, then you have this uh, right of passage. This is not just because I like it, but because it comes out of this uh, of the fundaments of this property scheme. So we have that monopolist over there, and once we talk about monopolist, of course, we come back to our big monopolist we have here. It is the state, and so we are coming closer again to the picture we had at the beginning. Um, we have now this old rule I mentioned in the beginning that is confirmed, so to speak. We have these rights of way in case of need. We have over there the monopolist beside others on public streets, infrastructures and so on. So with, with land that is suitable for such a use. So that the one on the left side shall not just cross some other uh, land, but goes the way that is suitable for this, that which is already prepared as a street, as infrastructure. Um, so if, if this is the case, then the rationale is that then he has this right to go there. Um, now, if, if that is the state over there, um, he has no other monopolies, not only these monopolies here. So if you apply the, the same rationale on the situation um, altogether, one could say um, maybe it's more than just right of way through these public, in this case public um, streets, but maybe it goes further and one could say the same rationale means that if you have the need, or maybe even emergency, and as long as that special neighbor you have here called state, as long as this neighbor has a legal or just factual monopoly in things, for instance, public tra uh, um, infrastructure, uh, but maybe also for public transportation, public health, public security, as long as private security services are, are um, not yet developed too much, etc., etc., many other things. So I could, well, one could say that out of these principles that once you have a need in certain services, supplied by the state and once he has a monopoly in these services then you have a right to use them against compensation of course but only compensation of these uses and not general taxation for any strange ideas and this of course gives you at least an additional argument against the membership of that club 
you do not need the men membership in order to use these, um, uh, these services. You just can get it because you have that old right from the Roman uh, rural right to use these services. And if you look at it that way, then it's not only a right of way, rights of ways, then you really have ways out of the state. Thank you.